For about $200, I got myself this brand new two-stroke gasoline engine for RC planes. And this is the first time I'm going to handle one, and it's going to be a video about the whole process I went through to make it work. So let's get started. This engine is available at banggood.com, I'll leave the link in the description below. This one is the Stinger 15cc SE. The price is about $240, which is excellent. And depending on the characteristics you need, you can even find cheaper ones. If you're wondering what's included in the box, well, we have pretty much everything we need for the engine, except the batteries and the fuel tank, and of course the pipes uh, or tubing for the fuel. But everything else is included, which is very good, including the ignition system for the spark plug, and we still need the whole range of accessories, like the propeller and all of that stuff. And let's take a closer look at this engine, which is actually beautiful. The engine uses a Walbro carburetor, which is supposed to be a very good kind of carburetors, very reliable for this kind of engines. I'm not an expert in the matter of engines, especially for RC planes, so maybe in the community you guys know more about engines than me, but I'm just going to share my experience and if this engine in particular from banggood.com is worth it, and I'll show you the whole process. So I'm going to start by putting the engine together and I'm going to drill some holes on the engine base or whatever you want to call it. And then I'm going to build a wooden stand for testing the engine. It took few hours to build the stand, but I finally have it done, and I didn't show the whole process because it was boring. But now we have to mount the engine and mount the rest of the things that we need for the engine to run. Because I know the engine will produce a lot of vibrations, I made sure to build the stand very strong, so it will stand the vibrations the engine will produce. I decided to place the engine sideways, so that way it's easier for me to access the adjustment needles for the low and high speed, and for what I've seen, it shouldn't affect the performance of the engine. The propeller I'm going to use is 14.6, and I need to widen the mounting hole to 8 millimeters. I bought the 8 millimeter bit, but I need to figure out a way to do it right and centered, because I don't want the propeller to be out of balance. If you're planning to start the engine by hand, you have to place the propeller at certain position so it is easier to begin ignition. That is, at the beginning of the compression cycle, you place the propeller at 1 o'clock. That way, when you push the propeller, it will create the spark and explosion to start the engine easier. And there we have it. But we still need to do a lot of work by placing the fuel tank and the tubing. And by the way, make sure you are using the right tubing, in my case, petrol or gas. Otherwise, your tubing will worn out faster over time. Always read the instructions. The manufacturer of the engine will tell you exactly what you need to do to their specific engine. There you'll find some useful extra information about the placement of the engine, how to make the connections of the tubing, the wiring, and other things. With the ignition system activated and connected to the spark plug, here you can hear how it activates every time I rotate the propeller. The engine comes with two different throttle arms, but the one mounted in the engine didn't work for me because it doesn't have the hole for the push rod. So I had to replace it, I had a little bit of trouble getting the screw out, it was very well tightened, but after a while I could do it and I replaced it. I also bought an even larger fuel tank because I thought the first one was too small, but I think it was okay. It's time to mix the petrol or gas and oil, and as indicated in the instructions, I'll be doing a mix of 30 to 1, that is 30 parts of fuel, 
and one part of oil. By the way, I'm using a fully synthetic two-cycle engine oil. But if they recommend a different one in the instruction manual, go for it. There are many ways or techniques to do this mixing. What I'm going to do is take a glass and pour three glasses of fuel and then divide the glass in ten parts, fill one of those parts with oil and then mix everything together. That is a 30 to 1 ratio. Then it's time to fill the fuel tank. I'm using an electric pump, but you can use a manual pump or try and do it by hand somehow. But it's recommended to get some kind of dedicated pump for this. Another important thing is the use of fuel filters. With that, we protect the engine from dust, dirt and impurities getting into the fuel and then sticking into the cylinder, damaging the engine. Right here, I'm only using one filter when filling the fuel tank but I should use another one going to the carburetor that I should put later. I had to turn around the fuel tank because it was siphoning some fuel through the ventilation pipe. After that, I'm going to secure the stand and activate the system and we're ready to start. I 3D printed a part to be used with the drill to rotate the propeller and start the engine. I used it several times, but it didn't start the engine, and that's because I needed to follow the procedure to make the engine start correctly. So after a while of using the drill to start the engine, I was damaging the propeller because this is not made for that, and also the battery of the drill was draining out. So I decided to start it with my hand, but I still needed to follow the procedure. And the procedure is to close the choke, then rotate the propeller so that the carburetor sucks a bit of fuel, then turn on the ignition system and try to start the engine. When you see some smoke coming out of the exhaust, that means that the fuel is getting into the cylinder. Then we open the choke and open the throttle about a quarter to a half and try to start the engine again. It took me a bit to figure out the right way to do the process. And after some time, I got some results. Always make sure to have some safety precautions in regards to the propeller, the fuel and other dangerous items. When starting the engine by hand, use a thick glove to protect your hand from the propeller. It still hurts if you get hit by it, but you won't lose your hand. And there it goes. Also make sure your fuel tank and fuel lines are very well strapped to avoid any kind of problem like this. This is just the first test run, but I need to go to an open area where the noise is not going to bother anyone. Because we're going to do the braking process, this is a very long and tedious process and we have to leave the engine on for hours. So before having some complaints from my neighbors, I went to a public park away from any house and I started to do the braking process. In this braking process, I'm also going to move a little bit the low and high speed needles or screws that are to calibrate the engine. These needles will calibrate how much fuel go into the carburetor in the low speed and high speed settings. Remember to wear ear protection for the long periods of times we're going to be doing the braking process. So at this point we just let the engine run for about 20 minutes, unfortunately I don't have the right tachometer to measure the RPMs, but in the instructions they recommend to run it for 20 minutes at about 2500 RPMs. 
After that we can accelerate a little bit for a few seconds, not pushing the engine too much because it's a brand new engine, we don't want the piston or the cylinder to wear out too much and we have to let it run for several hours or until we consume about two fuel tanks. Now this fuel tank that I'm using is very big and it's going to last for a long time, for about two or even three hours at low speed settings. That's why we have to be very patient because we have to break in the engine properly, otherwise it won't last as long as a very well treated engine. At the same time I start to play with the different settings of the low and high speed needles and I start to notice what's the difference when the engine is running rich or lean in the fuel mixture. If you're wondering what's that thing beside the engine, that's an optical tachometer that it's supposed to be reading the RPMs. It uses a laser beam and it's pointing to an aluminum tape that I put in the propeller, but it didn't work. So I guess I have to use a proper magnetic tachometer for this case. I think it's not reading the RPMs because it's affected by the daylight and that's why it's not working. I'm gonna leave you with pure images and sound of the braking process so you get a sense of how it was like and it went on for more than two hours and as I said in the beginning I'm not an expert in this kind of engines so I can't give you more recommendations. One thing is for sure and is that the vibrations are very strong. And this is how much fuel is being burned in about an hour, so this fuel tank will last for a long time. Of course the engine has been running for idle speed most of the time, so it will be burning more fuel once we use it in an airplane flying. I also started to move the engine around and it's supposed to keep going no matter what position it is at, but at some point it stopped the first time I tried that and then when I calibrated the carburetor it got better and kept going in whatever position I put it.
After two hours have passed, I decided to do the last few tests and then turn off the engine and go home. And it was very successful. I really like this engine. I can't wait to put it in an RC plane. This is how the engine looks like after it has been running for two hours and this is burn oil and it's very interesting how it even got into places it shouldn't be like in the propeller or the front of the engine but that's because of the smoke. I hope you enjoyed this video and if you want to buy this engine or other similar engines I'll leave the links in the description below. With every purchase you're helping the channel with some commissions and you're paying the same price. I hope to be using this engine soon in a project, so subscribe if you don't want to miss that, and I'll see you in the next project.